devils worship. In addition to the six basic fears, there was another evil by which people suffer. It constitutes a rich soil in which the seeds of failure grow abundantly. It is so subtle that its presence often is not detected. This affliction cannot properly, properly be classed as a fear. It is more deeply seated and more often fatal than all of the six fears. For want of a better name, let us call this evil susceptibility to negative influences. Men who accumulate great riches always protect themselves against this evil. The poverty-stricken never do. Those who succeed in any calling must prepare their minds to resist the evil. If you are reading this philosophy for the purpose of accumulating riches, you should examine yourself very carefully to determine whether you are susceptible to negative influences. If you neglect this self-analysis, it will forfeit your right to attain the object of your desires. Make the analysis searching. After you read the questions prepared for the self-analysis, hold yourself to a strict accounting in your answers. Go at the task as carefully as you would search for any other enemy you knew be waiting you in an ambush and deal with your own faults as you would with a more tangible enemy. You can easily protect yourself against highway robbers because the law provides organized cooperation for your benefit. But the seventh basic evil is more difficult to master because it strikes when you are not aware of its presence, when you are asleep and while you are awake. Moreover, its weapon is intangible because it consists of merely a state of mind. This evil is also dangerous because it strikes in as many different forms as there are human experiences. Sometimes it enters the mind through the well-meant words of one's own relatives. At other times it bores from within, through one's own mental attitude. Always it is as deadly as poison, even though it may not kill as quickly.